It's to be on that desk and on from the moment the camera turns on. But behind the scenes, you're part of the team to put the newscast together. Live from WLUK-TV, this is News 11 at 10. When we started the news in 71, we did some really ridiculous things at the beginning of those newscasts, the end in the newscasts themselves, to get attention. So people the next day would say, did you see what they did on 11 last night? And, and they, in four years, we were number one. TV 11 News continues. I'm Stanley Siegel. And things happen today to people here and around the world. Ray? We had Stanley Siegel, who was a tall, handsome guy. He was funny, and he would do anything uh, to get people to watch. 35 gallons of lemon jump. He did right here in this studio. He, they got him fired. He, Stanley was just, he was itching to get fired. But he said, what would it be like to be a, a, a cherry in a jello mold? So he got the studio hands to fill up a bathtub filled with jello. And he slipped down into the jello and he said, On special assignment at the bottom of the largest jello mold in the continental United States. And I was with him and I held the speaker to the snorkel and, uh, you know, he was cracking all these jokes and he got out and he was fired the next day. He's just an outrageous person. This is TV 11 News in for Friday, July 12, 1974. WLUK and Northeast Wisconsin, congratulations on 65 years together. Congratulations, WLUK, on 65 years serving Northeast Wisconsin. What was your best part or favorite part of the job? <laughs> Just getting to learn about something different every single day, being in the know and getting paid for it, and just the power that we have to affect good and change. I think that was probably my favorite part. My least favorite part? You want to know that? Yes. Weekends, Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve. <laughs> One thing that people know you for, John, is 30 years ago, more than 30 years ago, you started naming winter storms. We are able to name our first snowstorm. It seemed to have caught the public's eye. I recall one time a contest that was set up around the naming of the storms. The prize for the winning category and the winning list of storms was a trip to Flin Flon in Manitoba or a snowblower. Oh. <laughs> and uh, the, the winners were faced with the decision, do they want to go to Flin Flon or do they want the, uh, do they want the snowblower? They eventually chose, after some consternation, they eventually chose the snowblower. When I came to Green Bay, it really smelled bad. It smells horrible in Green Bay today, and that's why I'm here. This is a story about the smoke and the stench in northeastern Wisconsin. In downtown Green Bay, the air pollution was so bad, and so I personally sued eight major industries in Green Bay. And at the end, these industries either proved that they were doing everything they could to curb air pollution, or they uh, promised in writing to install air scrubbers. It was a big deal. All of the other TV stations came and covered it. That was the biggest environmental story that I did. When you look back, what are you most proud of during your time as a sportscaster in Green Bay? Well, I think, and this sounds funny, but, but we could be honest. Marquette basketball was the lone exception. The Bucks, the Brewers, the Badgers, basketball and football, and the Packers were all losers. Before the era when it began to change, he just mouthed essentially the PR extension of the Packers. And we got to be honest on the air 
and it was fun. Sometimes people didn't like it. So I'm on the air one night here, and uh, my wife gets a call a little after 10 o'clock, and the uh, guy says, are you watching your husband on TV right now? She says, yeah. Well, take a good look. You'll never see him alive again. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, got an I got an escort home, and there were unmarked cars parked around my house for a couple nights. I've been sued for stories at TV11 for millions of dollars. Unsuccessful lawsuits, but still you worry about it. So every week I'd have people mad at me and and then Friday would come and I'd go out and do these wonderful stories with kids that would just volunteer to help a little kid. <laughs> so I did one of those stories a week, a good story a week, and that always got me going. Oh, thank you. I have always said this about this station. I never felt more connected to communities than at TV11. I'm thrilled that I spent time here. I'm thrilled that I moved on and did other things and had more kids. And But I always tell my students when they're looking for internships, first stop, first stop, you go to 11. The 12 years here, followed by the 12 years I had at Schneider, put together about 24 of the best years of my life. The experience has made me and my wife appreciate Green Bay, Wisconsin, and we are so glad to call it home. Congrats to Northeast Wisconsin's favorite station. WLUK, celebrating 65 years together with you. I'm Jay Zoller, the general manager of WLUK-TV, uh, 20 years at the station. My name is Julie Beeler. I'm the news director here at WLUK-TV Fox 11 and I've worked here 32 years. Well, we're certainly part of the community. Uh, I think every journalist here, and, and certainly I feel part of the community, having lived in Green Bay almost my entire life. And uh, I've always thought of our service to the community as taking people places they can't go. That event could be a political rally, could be a visit by the president or a top contender. Uh, it could be a Packers game. I've got a card in my office, and it was from a couple who live in Marinette, Wisconsin, and they couldn't afford to go to the Super Bowl, and uh, it was in New Orleans. But Good Day Wisconsin, Fox 11 News at 5 and at 9, and we, we took them there. And they recited, as you opened up this little card, is that they said, thank you for showing us the jazz, thank you for showing us, you know, the beignets, thank you for taking us to the game. You know, we couldn't go to New Orleans, they went on, the Richardsons, but then they say, we went there with you. And I think that sums up, is that we take people places that they can't go. And I keep that card with me all the time, and I remind myself of our responsibility every day. Well, there's nothing more important to me and to local broadcasting than your connection with the community. And you know our mission statement from the very beginning dates that we want it to be the overall favorite television station for people here is we have to have a connection with the community. And uh, you know we crafted and created the family night that the Packers now have every year, best of class, uh, which features our saluting the best high school valedictorians throughout Northeast Wisconsin. Uh, the Golden Apples, uh, which we've done for, for over 20 years, uh, is a terrific community event. So the local community is very important and we've done several projects specifically dedicated to this local community. I think one thing that won't change in the next 65 years is the responsibility that we have as storytellers. Journalists often are said to be the first writers of history. And we write that history in respect to our audience because they are the people who see that history and then we tell that story. Storytelling, no matter if it's 10 years from now, 50 years from now, 65 years from now, whatever technology you're using to tell the story, the storytelling is what's going to be important and linking that storytelling to our audience and the communities we serve. You know, as I look out into the future, I still think that the most important thing that local broadcasting can do to survive and thrive is to continue to be committed to the local community. There are many, many ways to be able to see entertainment, sports uh, on many different channels. And I think over the next 65 years, it's just going to continue to expand and get bigger. Uh, as long as we have a connection, be that central point for people to go to, 
for local information